you don't set boundaries for yourself this person can end up trying to sleep with you uh fill your mind up with lies you know this person can sit here and give you this illusion that they want their family back but then their actions show differently don't go by what he is or she is possibly saying to you and go by action hey guys welcome back to my channel i appreciate you guys joining me in my live stream with me and my sister i hope you guys went ahead and followed her on her youtube page where you can hear more of her views from a marriage perspective like i said before she was married to her high school she is married to her high school sweetheart and they've been together for about 12 years married for a couple of years now so um there were a lot of questions on the live stream that i did not get to address and this question has came up like so many times where i just want to go ahead and address it i have made a video in the past a few years back when i first started to make youtube about being left um by your child's father or like you guys have broken up so this subject i just want to touch on and where i'm at now in my life and you know how i was able to heal from that and those feelings that you may be feeling right now and that's why you're watching this video but i do want to make a disclaimer there were some alarming um, comments in my live stream before where someone was dealing with not only a narcissist um, baby's father but abusive mentally and physically and if you feel like you are in a situation where you are mentally and physically being abused and your mental health where you want to commit suicide or not want to be here anymore that is look guys i'm only sharing you my experiences and what i've learned and my downs that i went through but i am not licensed a licensed psychologist um i can only just give you my take on my experiences so if you feel like you are in danger if you feel like your son uh your child's father is abusive to you you guys really need to reach out for professional help for one get away from that person and number two reach out to someone that can help you a hotline i can post that down below like a hotline of a suicide hotline or a domestic violence hotline because i take that very very serious it's not a game to be played with if somebody is threatening your life and and you know saying that they are going to kill you or abuse you you need to reach out for help there's only so much that i can do and i'm praying for you um if you are going through that i saw a comment from um one of my subscribers who's saying that their son their child's father was beating them burning them abusing them and i just want you guys to take time to pray for that person and sending love and light to you i'm so sorry you are going through this but if you do run across this video i do want to say to reach out for professional help where you can get the resources that you need to get away from that situation because if somebody's threatening your life like i said that is very 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 serious so i'm gonna get into my situation so i am a single mom and i have been separated from my sons my son is on almost five we broke up when um you know I was pregnant um I kept there was a lot that went on between that a lot of things that I didn't realize a lot of things that you know I probably swept under the rug and I just know that we were going through a very very rough patch um probably midway into my pregnancy there were other red flags that i tended to ignore but as my pregnancy kept getting more there were other problems arriving in the relationship and you know back then i didn't see a lot of the red flags and the signs of you know things that were happening not trying to get into detail not trying to bash him because we are currently in a good space now when it comes down to co-parenting but back then it was it just felt like peace and moving on was the inevitable inevitable however you say that word like i felt like i would never come to that space because one of my biggest fears was becoming a single mom i didn't want to become another statistic i'm like here i am in college you know dating a college educated man thinking that this relationship like i was going to eventually marry this person and come to find out that just did not take place and i had to walk away from that um relationship because i 
was told that he was not sure if he wanted to marry me. And I'm like, if a man takes you as far as being in a relationship with you, getting you pregnant, and then when push comes to shove, question if he wants to marry you or not. Which is why I reiterate all the time, do not get pregnant. Do not wait if you want, if you can to have sex with somebody um, until they are fully committed to you. And just look out for the red flags because having a child with somebody, the issues and the underlying issues that you swept under the rug gets bigger when you get pregnant. It just, a lot of people ask this question. It's like, why do people break up when a baby comes? Just a baby ruin a relationship. I don't believe a baby ruins a relationship. It tests the foundation of that relationship. And if that foundation was weak, it is going to come crumbling down. Because women, we have no choice but to mature. We have no choice but to become a better woman and look at our options and look at things that were we were probably avoiding in the past with like sex and, and alcohol and partying and like not really looking into who you are really with and you know, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't put so much like burdens on you to say, oh, you should have made better choices. Because I remember when I first made my video about being a single mom, I was bashed so hard. I was called a slut. I was called a whore. I was said, all types of things were said in the comment section of my video. And I realized that people really are out there judging. Like I made this choice to be a single mom, which is just... I, if I would have known how things would have turned out, of course I would have made better decisions. But I'm young, I'm learning just like you are young and learning and maybe you had a mother to teach you these things. I was raised by my grandmother so it's like I didn't have the certain um, wisdom that I do have now. And I'm grateful for the wisdom that my child has given me and my experiences. So going back into my relationship, when we first ended it, I think that I was not prepared for him actually moving on um and he moved on very quickly um with someone else and I had to sit back and watch him live his life while I was stuck at home sick pregnant overweight feeling not good about myself and I also had to go to school on top of that so I had the stress of school I had the stress of work and walking around a college campus eight months nine months pregnant all the way up until I gave birth and not having that support and love and protection that I was supposed to get so you are feeling inadequate in your pregnancy and then on top of that you add the emotion of pregnancy um the hormones and the extra sensitivity that you have and i am so sorry that if you are going through that right now i feel your pain it is like the worst feeling ever i think i literally cried every single day when i was pregnant i woke up crying i went to sleep crying i would randomly be sitting and just start crying because i was just very depressed and sad the fact that i was a single mom and that i had to watch this this man basically live his life and party as if I didn't exist and it sucks because it's like you're reminded daily of that person because you are carrying that person's child so how do you maneuver do through that well what I did um I went through the emotions but I also focused on preparing for my child I took parenting classes um I got close to God. I, you know, was with my friends and they were supportive. And I just, I had a lot of distractions, which was like school, work. Um, but even with all those distractions, I could not help but to think like, wow, I'm really in this situation. Like, I hate this. But let me tell you something. When that child gets here, your whole like thought process of like focusing on your child's father kind of redirects to the child not all the time because sometimes you can be so depressed where you're not even enjoying your birthing experience you're not even enjoying when the child gets here because depression has filled you up so bad a lot of people don't want to talk about that you know when people say oh my god when I had my kid I just started bawling crying that wasn't the experience for me I was more so like anxiety like what am I gonna do like I'm over here faking the funk and smiling to people and scared that I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing as to being a mom but 
it naturally end up coming eventually to me um, to take care of this child, feed this child, and be the best mom that I can be. And I breastfed my kid day and night, and I stayed up, and I was just so alert. And you just get the strength out of nowhere that you didn't have at first. You just get the strength. You know, I don't know what it is about having giving birth, but I'm telling you, once your child is here, everything just changes so much. But I would say that, yes, concentrate on getting prepared with your child being here, but also go to counseling. If you are dealing with depression to the point where you want to die and you're pregnant and you're just depressed about your pregnancy, you need to go and see a counselor. I personally went to go see um, a counselor, um, a therapist um, during my pregnancy that was provided by my insurance or whatever. I just think that talking to people and talking to a therapist is so important when you feel like you don't want a, to live anymore or you feel like you know, you're just so depressed where you're not enjoying anything about your pregnancy. It is so important to watch videos like this but more importantly to go and seek that help and go talk to a professional so they can help you one of the things that my therapist had told me was that i need to set boundaries you know i tried to bring my son's father into a therapy session and she told me by the end of the session look this is probably not gonna work, but I'm gonna tell you now, boundaries is probably the most important thing that you will have to do when it comes down to co-parenting. And I think I didn't understand the extent of it of what she was saying until I had my kid. I let a lot of things slide. I let him come whenever he wanted to come over. I didn't set boundaries for myself. I didn't, you know, um, I mostly just wanted him to be there and that's it. You know, I wanted him to be around us. I wanted him to, you know, and I still had these feelings that I didn't deal with, you know. So as we were spending time as a family and kind of getting back together in a way, but not like committed, but like, you know, we were like messing around. And eventually I had found out that he was messing with another woman and I something snapped inside of me and said enough you are going to take your dignity you are going to take your pride and you're going to take whatever self-esteem you have left and you are not turning back to this because you have somebody looking at you now now I understand that you're probably hurt I understand that you're probably heartbroken but one thing you need to understand is that you guys are not together for a reason. You guys didn't work out for a reason. And this could be manipulation. It could be lies. It could be cheating. It could be you guys were just not clicking, vibing, maybe even miserable together. But the love and the sex and the distractions and the idea of family probably made you bypass all of that and say, it doesn't matter. We'll get through this. Sometimes we tell lies to ourselves to try to compromise being a family with somebody we were never meant to be a family with, only to learn from that person. And I feel like every experience is a learning experience. So don't regret having a child. Just look at it in a form of I'm gaining wisdom. Yes, this hurts. This is so degrading. It's It, it makes you feel so low to know that you weren't the one that he chose, especially having a child and carrying that person's seed it is the worst feeling for me that was the worst feeling for me and um I didn't understand it and I looked at myself for the longest like what could I have done what was what why was I not you know good enough you know I was looking at myself and really you know all this things these flaws that I had were because he you know the relationship was not working out on both ends, but I put that blame on myself and you have to just understand you are good enough. You are worthy of genuine love. You are worthy of being loved and cared for and being respected and being treated as the queen that you are. That is what you deserve. Or King, if you're a guy listening to this and just trying to, you know, this can work both 
way. And just because this person has moved on with somebody else does not make the person better than you. That is not what that means. That does not mean that that man has chosen that person over you and your family. Now, if it's a situation where they are, that has nothing to do with you. That has everything to do with that person and their toxic and dysfunctional functional mindset and you can look back and look at how that person was raised was they raised in a household that had a father did they raise did they get raised in a household with what type of mother did they have did they have a mother that constantly brought men in and out of their lives like it is a difference when it comes down to how somebody is raised and what they you know how they treat the people around them you know that says a lot about that person so when you see this man moving on and living his life and partying and not taking the responsibility that he needs to take care of when it comes down to your child understand that that has nothing to do with your child it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with him and his dysfunctional characteristics and all you can do in that moment is pray for that man Pray for that other person that they become the man of God that they are supposed to be and let God take care of it because we can't change people. We can yell, we can scream, we can talk crap all day and that is not going to make a difference to this person unless they want to change. Another thing I want to reiterate is that um, or talk about is that if he is not taking responsibility and you have to move on at the same time, listen, you can't control what other people do make sure you are taking the necessary measures that your child is taking care of or your children are taking care of you sitting there having sympathy for him and being a pick me as an i don't want to put him on child support if he is not helping you out financially at all and he is not coming to see his kids at least he can do is help you you know you didn't make that child by yourself you should not sit here and have to take on the responsibility by yourself it is not fair to your children because when mommy is overworked and working and working and working who's at home taking care of the child who's at home giving that child attention and love not you because you're overworking and you're working twice as hard to fill in the shoes of a parent who's supposed to be there so take the necessary measures that you need and stop trying to play nice and set boundaries now if this person is active in your child's life you need to set boundaries no they can't just randomly come and you know come to your house randomly unannounced or come hang out at your house now if this baby is small what i did um i was at i i live with my grandparents so um when he would come over i would leave and i made sure my child had everything i did i had because a lot of men want to sit here and say i want to see my child i want to see my child so they can take those photos and post them on facebook and not really know a damn thing what to do with the kid you know they like to show off the kids to the family and get all these comments from women and praise about being a good dad but at the end of the day they don't even know how to take care of that child late at night you know or how to properly parent because they didn't take parenting classes and that was always my concern for me I'm like I people can say I'm wrong for this but I did not allow my newborn to leave home all his stuff and his dad agreed like you know I was not gonna have my newborn in and out of everyone's house that is not safe to do for your child's immune system especially now um and it's not good for the your child's environment and you don't know how clean or how sanitary that environment is and if that child is going to have everything that it needs now if that parent just doesn't want to cooperate at all then yes please 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 set boundaries for yourself now if that parent and child's older and they're like hey i want to take them to the birthday party and you didn't really have plans that day maybe you may need a favor from them one day and say you know what cool you could take them to the birthday party just make sure you bring them back at this time I'm lenient to that point. Like, if you want to spend time with your child, I'm going to allow you to spend time with your child. I'm not going to, you know, sit here and be 
malicious because you don't want to give them that power that you're bothered by them because if you are co-parenting with somebody who is a narcissist one of their main goals is to make sure that you are bothered they want to make sure that you are upset you are angry at them and you are thinking about them and the best thing about that yeah you may be angry and upset and thinking about them but they don't have to know that they don't have to know that you are feeling the this type of way about them just be the bigger person and suck it up and cry about it later talk about it with your therapist and set boundaries boundaries is just probably i'm gonna keep saying that over and over again because it's just that important because when you don't set boundaries for yourself this person can end up trying to sleep with you uh fill your mind up with lies you know, this person can sit here and give you this illusion that they want their family back, but then their actions show differently. Don't go by what he is or she is possibly saying to you and go by action. Like, don't be so quick to give in because you want this illusion of family and if you are feeling like hopeless that you know you'll never find love again or this hurts so bad where you don't trust men again or you don't trust having a kid again because for the longest i would tell people i'm not having any kids i'm like i'm done one and done it's a lot to deal with but after seeing my sister go through pregnancy and having such a supportive partner my brother-in-law is just amazing father he was there rubbing on my sister's back giving her massages catering attending to her very needs and then i realized that all men are not what i had to experience and to give you hope that just because you're experiencing this now you need to get away from the situation you need to heal and you need to set boundaries when it comes down to co-parenting you don't need to have if, if it's hurt so bad to you where you're so attached to this person take six months half a year to a year to kind of seclude yourself off because one thing about dating somebody and moving on is that you don't have to see that person again but when you're co-parenting with that person you're gonna have to see them almost every other weekend and communicate with them in all levels so i want to finish up this video to say that you are loved and you are deserving of love and if you are watching him move on with his life and look like he's happy and starting up another family or relationship with somebody else instead of putting so much focus on that person and so much on the what ifs start focusing on your future and the person that you're going to meet and the love that and the family that you want to have and it may not god knows that it's not supposed to be with that person and that's why that person's not in your life he will never leave you or never show you wrong and the universe is always going to guide you where you need to go and everything that you need things that you thought you didn't even need he is going to send you someone that is going to fulfill all those needs and more so you have to refocus on yourself and trust that when you're ready and you're healed and you feel better about yourself and about and accepting the situation for what it is because you can't change it have you ever tried to direct something in your life and try so hard to like no but i want this and i'm gonna do it my way and you fail each time or you thought you wanted something each time and it kept feeling that is the same thing with this is that you think that you want something you beg for it you ask for it and then that is nothing that you would want for yourself and your future for your child's future you never know what god is trying to save you from um i think if me and my son's father was probably still together and living together we would be in jail like it would have been crazy so i am a okay with how everything has worked out i am have a beautiful child out of it and i wish him nothing but the best and then for myself because i know what i deserve and god knows what i deserve and know what i need in my life and it is okay and there is a glimmer of hope there's women every day who start new families and able to move on and thank god that they weren't with that same person and that you must not give your power away if that person is trying to be a narcissist and get back at you and do things and post petty things and if you have people sending you things like oh look what they posted and look what they did for this girl and da, 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 
don't tell them please don't send me that because it's disrupting my peace there is nothing you can do other than handle it legally of what that person is doing and go to the courts with that but when it comes down to just being on facebook and yelling about it and getting mad about it there's absolutely nothing facebook can do for you other than talk about you behind your back because those same people on facebook that's commenting about your business are going back talking about you and your situation and laughing about it so therefore keep your business off of social media keep your business off of facebook because it's not going to get back to him and if it does get back to him it's just going to be nothing but drama don't feed in into that negative energy there is a field of energy that those type of people especially narcissists people feed off of and you must not give them that because that is exactly what gives them power and makes them drive even more let them be bothered and miserable and you let God take care of them what did he say make your enemies your what your footstool and every person and I mean every person who has crossed me God has made them my footstool God has made them my footstool to the point where I was praying for my ex to get out of his situation because it was that bad i feel bad so not to say that every person you will see every person get their karma but just trust and believe they will let go let god heal if you need to cry cry it out and focus on your child focus on your self-healing don't just focus on your child but like i said focus on your self-healing focus on you know leveling up um, on your career that's what I did I focused on my career solely I didn't date for the longest I was like nope I need to get my money up I need to get my bread up I need to make sure I'm good I'm Gucci and then I got into a space of Ooh, okay now I can date so I want to make a video in the future of like how to date being a single mom because it can be very difficult trying to maneuver social life and life with your kid so if you guys have any other questions or suggestions please comment below and let me know any other ideas you want me to talk about or any of your experiences you would like to share about co-parenting maybe some tips that you would like to give other women and other subscribers down below um you can really be a helping hand in healing this is a community of healing and that's why i've made this channel is that we are leveling up and we are healing from our past wounds to be better women and have better lives and better futures for our ourselves and I trust and believe that it's going to happen for you you just have to believe it for yourself thank you so much for watching this video and look forward to more content in the future make sure you hit that like button share if this resonates with you or somebody that you know and subscribe to this channel thank you so much bye